later. Then in chapter 2, he goes on to describe the guilt of the religious man, the religious man who thinks, who is ready to judge other people. You who pass judgment on others, verse, chapter 2, verse 1. Do you judge yourself? Because in the thing that you judge other people, you are condemning yourself. The very sins that you find in other people are there in your heart also. That's what the Lord is trying to tell the Pharisees. Okay, you catch this woman caught in adultery. You Pharisees who are standing there, tell me how many of you have not committed adultery in your heart? If you have not committed adultery in your heart, throw a stone at this woman. And do you know what it says? The oldest man went away first. <laughs> you read John chapter 8, the oldest man walked away first. He couldn't stand in the presence of Jesus. The light was so shining there. They went away one by one. That's what the Bible says. You who condemn others. What sin is there in the other fellow which you haven't done in your own heart? Tell me. And he says, we know the righteous judgment of God falls upon those who practice such things. But do you suppose that when you pass judgment, verse 3, just because you practice these things in secret, you are going to escape that judgment. That fellow practices it openly. You practice it secretly. You think it makes a difference. In the eyes of men, it makes a difference. In the eyes of men, you are a holy man. And that fellow is a sinner. But God may deal more mercifully with him than with you because you got one more sin called hypocrisy which that sinner doesn't have. And that's the worst sin of the Lord. Once you see that hypocrisy, pretense, and spiritual pride are the two sins which are on the top of the list, above murder, adultery, and all come further down the list. Top of the list is hypocrisy and spiritual pride. Once you see that, you will discover in the story of the prodigal son that the biggest sinner in that story was the elder son, not the younger one. He was much better. Once you see that story from God's eyes, you'll see the elder son was the biggest criminal in that house. The younger son was far better. That's what Jesus tried to tell the Pharisees in his time and they didn't understand it. And I find that's what I try to tell a lot of Christians and they don't understand it either. Because the Christians of today are just as blind as the Pharisees of that time. They think it's those godless people who are sinners. They don't realize that God sees hypocrisy and spiritual pride, pretending to be holy, for example, giving other people the impression that you're a very prayerful person. That puts you top of the list if you're not actually like that in your private life. Giving other people the impression that you are very generous in giving to the Lord when it's not true in your private life. It puts you at the top of the list above all the murderers and adulterers in the world. Have you seen yourself like that? Chapter 2 is for such people who consider themselves to be pretty holy, pretty accepted before God, not who look down at these fellows who are drug addicts and drunkards and, you know, horrible things like, uh, we've got clean sins like spiritual pride and hypocrisy, not these horrible ones like drug addiction and all that. Chapter 2 is for such people and Christian churches are filled with such people. And the more separated they are from the denomination churches, the bigger the Pharisees you find in them. The smaller Pharisees and the mainline denomination. The big Pharisees, the more their doctrine is pure, the bigger the Pharisees they are. Because there is so much hypocrisy in their life. They are defeated by sin in their private life. And they think they are better than everybody else. The more you think you are better than people in other denominations, the more you have a responsibility to manifest a life which is far superior to the people in that, that denomination. And ask yourself whether it is true. If you find one person in those denominations whose life is better than yours, you should hang your head in shame and say, Lord, please don't let me waste my time and fool other people thinking I'm better than them. I'm not. 